You won't believe what is inside this Altoids tin. It's unbelievable. Welcome to Urban Knife Guy, where we explore the urban lifestyle and jungle survival. Today, we're going to have a look at my updated version of the urban survival tin for disruption, disaster, or attack. If you'd like to watch my original version of this tin, do check out the link in the card above or the description below. First, if you watch this channel regularly but have not subscribed, please do so to support the channel. Thanks. This urban survival tin is designed to increase your chances of survival and rescue or escape specifically in an urban environment should things go bad. It is designed for both domestic and travel use although you cannot hand carry this tin on a plane. I will not share my thoughts and philosophy on why and how I put this tin together. You can check out my original video as mentioned earlier. But if you like to build this tin, I'll put together a written guide with details, photos and product links for all the different items inside. I've also updated it with the contents of this new tin. You can download it for free at urbanknifeguide.com. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. The Urban Survival Tin is built within an Altoids tin, which is a popular breath mint. However, if you can't find it, you can also find a plain version like this. You can find it on Arts and Crafts Supply stores. It's basically the same size. And for friends in Europe or Asia, you can go to Marks and & Spencer and look for their Strong Mints Tin. It is also exactly the same size. Uh, but for my preference, I'm using an Altoids Tin because the community knows what this is and I guess there's kind of an attachment to that. So there are two Ranger bands around it and not only does it hold the tin shut, but Ranger bands are great fire extenders if you ever need to you know, get a fire going uh, to add kindling and uh, more things to burn. And inside the tin itself, we've got a couple of items. On the inside of the lid, there's a striking surface for matches which are inside. Over here, I've got a door pass kind of a tool and this is the Sparrow's Flex Pass which allows you to put this between a door and the door jam and you can pull it so that you can disengage the lock or you can push it, so it depends where the hinges are. So if you've ever watched movies where you see, you know, someone use a credit card to open a door, that's kind of the same principle, but this is a machined tool just for that. Next up, I've got something for first aid, and we've got different items inside uh, to hold everything together. I've got this plastic sleeve, uh, which was cut to size to fit the tin. Of course, a paper clip to hold everything in place, and that can be very useful as well. And inside here, I've got some purification tabs, so water purity tabs, uh, alcohol swab, and a variety of plasters or band-aids. So just uh, good to have for first aid. And here you can see with all the different items. Some things are a bit different from my original kit and the reason why I changed things up were really based from comments that people made, really useful comments and also I've been using this kit for almost a year now and just through my experience of building different survival kits, tins and pouches, I've come to realize you know what could be more useful, what's more practical, so I've switched some things out. Incidentally, I've created a new playlist just for survival tins, kits and pouches, so do check out my channel for that. So let's get on with what's inside here. Let's start off over here with the matches. So these are waterproof and windproof matches held together by uh, some gaffer's tape, which is also in the fire extender. So just three of them, and of course to light them, I can use that striking surface over here. Uh, to go with the candle or any lighting mechanism inside, I've got this candle, which is the trick birthday kind of candle, which is self-relighting because that's basically gunpowder kind of uh, scattered within uh, the wax and the wick, I believe. I have got a mini glow stick. So basically, this is like a Salem stick, but mini version. You can break it and then give it a slight shake and it lights up and this lasts for 12 hours. I've tested it out before. Some eye drops, this is just uh, disposable eye drops in an urban environment, very easy to get dust in your eyes, especially if there's disruption or disaster or attack. I have a compass in my original tin. I said, you know, there's no need for a compass. My rationale was if you're in an urban environment and you get out of your house or your office or wherever you are and all the major landmarks are gone, you know, things are pretty bad and this kit isn't really gonna help you out anyway. 
However, you know, people did point out if you happen to be in a subway system underground, it's true. If everything is dark and you, you have no landmarks, uh, having that compass can be useful. So I have put that in as well. Let's see what else we can get here. Let's start on this side. I've got a nail. So this is a, just a steel nail and it's two inches. So the reason I have a nail inside, uh, besides you know using it to pry things open or we need to poke something for whatever reason, uh, really I was thinking in terms of uh, maybe under some kind of attack situation where intruders are trying to get to you, you are behind a door which may not be that very strong or there's no lock. Uh, you can actually take this nail, nail it into the ground or nail it in a way that it can be used to obstruct the door. So it doesn't take up much space, so multi-purpose, I think it's still good to put it inside. I've got two straw tubes here. So basically these are plastic so uh, straws sealed on both ends, but in one I've got uh, antiseptic cream, and this is for first aid to clean wounds. And in this side, I've got some cotton wool infused with petroleum jelly, and this is used as a tinder to be used with the matches shown earlier, or you can use this lighter over here. So this is a peanut lighter. You unscrew it. And I've done a video to show how long, you know, uh, it burns for. And I've kept this in this, in this tin for almost a year, 10 months, and it still lights. <sighs> so really awesome. So keep that tight. And of course, there's an O-ring, which is a plastic ring, which keeps everything uh, really tight and uh, doesn't allow the lighter fluid to evaporate. Now on the outside over here, I've got some hemp wick, which is uh, soaked in beeswax, and that is just coiled around the entire lighter. And basically this forms a wick. And if I were to light the lighter, I'll light the wick and blow out the uh, wick or the lighter, close it up, and this wick over here would be used basically just as the light source. So basically you don't use up your fuel and you use this hemp wick uh, soaked in beeswax. So just, uh, just I guess, a great package over here, but allows you to, to save on your fuel. In terms of cordage, I've got some dental floss that is held together or wrapped up so it doesn't just untangle with some gaffer's tape. Uh, this is Gorilla Floss, supposed to be the strongest uh, dental floss available. So I've got that there. But I've also got some Kevlar thread, uh, which uh, I think can be very useful for repairs or if you need some kind of strong cord uh, that doesn't take up much space. More for first aid, I've got some painkillers or Panadol wrapped up in aluminum foil. Gaffer's tape, about four feet over here. And basically what I have is the core or the plastic stem or shaft of a earbud. And uh, that basically cut it to size. This is uh, two inches and just kept wrapping gaffer's tape here. So of course, gaffer's tape or duct tape, very useful in any situation. And as a fire extender as well, as mentioned before. A whistle is very important. If you happen to be in an urban situation where you might be trapped, you can't be shouting all the time. It takes a lot of energy. And uh, if you get in a weakened state, it's very hard to keep shouting uh, for long periods of time. That's where this whistle comes in. I've got the torch light. So this is an Olight IR2, very good flashlight uh, for its size. It's bright. Uh, it it's, works on a rechargeable battery over there. So I do charge it up. Uh, Every, I would say, probably three months or so. I'll just make sure it's charged up. On this side over here, I've got a safety pin, which can just be pretty useful. We've got, you know, kind of a needle over here or a sharp point at least. And I've got a magnet. No particular reason, uh, just that it doesn't take up much space, but I believe it could be useful. For example, if I were to use this tin to maybe collect water, but it's just at, at an angle at a pipe maybe which needs to be held in place uh, maybe that magnet could just be used to hold it in place so it doesn't fall down uh, or whatever it might be useful for so i have that there so that's a rare earth magnet which is pretty strong for the size i do have a needle over here and this is a big needle and this is more for repairs for the kevlar thread i forgot to mention that within this uh, first aid sleeve of here i do have a small needle 
So really, if, you know, I need something, maybe like a, instead of, because I don't have tweezers in this pouch, if I did need to tweeze something out, I could use this needle and the end of the safety pin and use that. Or worst case scenario, if I need to do any kind of stitching for wounds, uh, that smaller needle can come into play. And finally, my main tool is this Leatherman Squirt. I used to carry the Spyderco bug inside as well, but I've realized, you know, it's not really that effective. There is a knife over here with the squirt. And, you know, generally, people who carry this, including myself, will be carrying an EDC knife. So we do have a bigger knife and sometimes even two knives on us. So really, this becomes a backup knife. So we don't need another small knife. Just one small knife is good enough. So that's why I only now have one knife and one tool inside. And of course, with the squirt, you get the pliers, which is the main tool. And then you get also scissors and files and screwdrivers. So just a great small multi-tool all around. And just the this uh, form factor and the design, the shape doesn't take up much space. It fits in very well into an urban survival tin. There you have it, all the items in my updated urban survival tin. As mentioned, if you'd like to build this kit, I've written a guide with photos and product links for all the different items in the tin. You can download it for free at urbanknifeguide.com. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.